When you're dealing with a jealous, miserable person, an envious person with a negative spirit, they will often try to get you to settle for things that they themselves would not settle for. You often see this in what I would say is fake friendships. I say fake friendships because a real friend wants to see you get ahead in life. But when you're dealing with a miserable, jealous friend, they try to get you to settle for less than what they know you deserve. They try to convince you that, oh, your relationship is not that bad. Even though he's cheating, it's not that bad. He probably didn't mean it. He doesn't love her. They don't want you to have the top tier job because they themselves don't have the top tier job. And if they do, they don't want you to get too far ahead of them. They also try to convince you that, you know what, maybe your work environment is not that bad. You know, maybe they don't mean it that way. Trying to get you to settle. You see, when somebody has jealousy and envy against you and they try to get you to settle for things, they always try to place doubt in your mind. They try to make you think that the way you feel is not valid and that somehow your situation is not that bad. And when you're dealing with people who are like that and they know that your situation is bad, your situation does need to change, you do need to get out of that relationship, you do need a better job. People who are secretly envious and jealous, especially fake friends, they will not help you get out of those situations. They will talk about you to other people and support you in your face, but talk behind your back. See, as women, we have to understand who is for us and who is against us. And a friend will not see your misery, misery over and over again. They won't see you being with a man who doesn't treat you well, who disrespects you, who cheats on you. He might do all these different things. A real friend is not going to try to convince you that somehow, some way, that man is good for you. Now, I'm not saying it's the responsibility of the friend to get you out of bad situations, but friends do not place doubt. And when you have a friend who's a hater, who's a jealous person, they try to convince you that your toxic situations aren't that bad, even though they know for themselves they wouldn't dare tolerate a man mistreating them. They wouldn't dare be in a, a, you know, a position, a job where they're not being paid well and treated well. You might have a friend that's doing all these great things in life. You really admire that person. But because they have a jealous, envious, negative spirit, they don't want to give you information about how they do things out of fear that you might surpass them. They like you being just a tad bit lower than them. And people who are like that, you really need to stay away from. See, we have this whole thing about gatekeeping. And I understand that, you know, certain things everybody doesn't need to know. That's how you keep order. That's how you keep things decent, especially when it comes to living environments. Like they say, people who live in the suburbs, you know, they have these little communities and clubs and they just do different things and they keep their community nice and tidy. They don't want outsiders coming in messing things up. Well, that might be great when it comes to community service, but that is not the way a friendship is supposed to be. Friends should not deliberately withhold information out of fear that somehow you're going to surpass them. If they have that kind of jealous, envious spirit, you need to not associate yourself with that person or call them your friend. I understand because myself being a business owner, you don't want to just give people the easy route of doing things when it took you years to learn what you know. However, when you have a friend, I do believe in what they call nepotism, as in you show preference to those people. Those are your friends. Those are your family. You help them the best way you can. But when somebody has a jealous, envious, and they're miserable, they believe that helping you will somehow put them in danger of becoming number two in the world's eyes. I know it sounds weird, but I'm telling you, when it comes to a lot of these fake friendships, especially amongst women, it's all about competition. And because it's all about competition, they will constantly try to convince you that settling for less than what you deserve is okay. They try to make you feel like your emotions are not valid. They invalidate you. 
You could tell them, my manager, I think my boss is bullying me. You know, she says this, she says that. She's constantly coming at me about this and that. And they'll try to convince you that, oh, you're just too sensitive. She probably doesn't mean it that way. Why you take it that way? You're just being sensitive. I've heard that before where they said, I think you're taking it the wrong way. No, I'm taking it how I'm taking it because that's how I'm perceiving it. And you can't tell me how to perceive something. Until somebody comes along and clears up whatever it is that you might be feeling or perceiving, nobody can tell you that what you're feeling is wrong. And that's what a lot of fake friends try to do. Even they themselves, they'll try to convince you that, you know, certain things you just don't need. And then God forbid, and I have to go there, I'm going to go there. Your spiritual friends, your church friends, the women who are spiritual, who have God in their lives, a lot of them who are over-righteous and overzealous, they try to convince you that anytime you want to do something a little bit greater, that you're not being humble. I can't stand the humble Olympics. I am not against being humble. I am a follower of Jesus. I believe in being humble. But what I will not do is allow somebody else to try to humble me because they're trying to make me miss out on opportunity that might bring me up a little bit higher because it makes them feel uncomfortable. That's what people will do, especially, and I got to go there and I don't care who's mad. A lot of spiritual people, a lot of religious people, Anytime they see you making a move in life, not all of them, of course, but some religious people, some so-called spiritual people, they see you making a little bit of moves in life and suddenly they start telling you, okay, just make careful, make sure of this, be careful of that. Don't forget about God. I'm sorry, I live in the city. <laughs> don't forget about God. Don't, don't let this money get in the way. Don't let that job get in the way. Just don't forget. Mind you, you haven't done anything to make them think that somehow, some way you're forgetting God or that you're not humble. You're just happy about what you're doing. You're running your business. You're making more money than what you ever made. You might be doing wonderful things, nothing sinful, nothing crazy. You're living your life and you're doing better. But when people have over spirituality, as in that over righteous, not God spirituality, they tend to think that somebody getting ahead and doing well for themselves is not being humble. And you really have to watch that. That's where that whole trying the spirit comes in. Because even within the church, yes, church women, faith, women of faith can be very jealous and very miserable and very envious. And it's because sometimes they don't understand that you can have God in your life and still have financial wellness. You can be financially successful. You can be a woman who is confident. You can be beautiful. You can have healthy relationships. People can be in awe of you in a healthy way. And that doesn't make you any less godly or any less humble. But when you have a friend who is spiritual and they try to convince you every time you want to do something, well, you don't really need all of that. It's not about needing. I want it. And I think when you are determined to level up in your life and not just with spiritual friends, but friends in general, you have to be so determined to want what you want and need what you need in life that you don't let anybody else's doubt their fears and insecurity. Because when people try to place doubt, especially the spiritual friends, once again, they like to lean more on the waiting for God part instead of moving and putting things into action and walking by faith part. And when they do that, they try to convince you that you need to just slow down. No, I'm running full speed ahead of what God told me to do. That's my spiel on that. So even within spiritual relationships with friendships, some of them can be very jealous and envious. And they use the humble tactics to try to slow you down a notch by telling you, you know, just make sure you stay humble. Don't forget about God. You love the Lord. You know God. And that's why you're going to continue doing what you're doing. All right. So when it comes to jealousy within friendships, spiritual or secular, regular, whoever, don't allow other people to place their doubt on you and to get you feeling like you're doing something wrong because you want better for your life. And you have to recognize when somebody is trying to keep you in that subservient position to themselves because you ever look at somebody's life and they have a healthy relationship. 
They have a healthy marriage. They have a good job. But yet, they'll convince you, well, yeah, you can keep being the bag lady. You know, what's wrong with that? You're doing the best you can and you're doing good at it. No, no. Don't let people down you and talk down to you in that way. Because when people are fake friends, once again, these are not real friends. Real friends will not convince you to settle for less than what you deserve and less than what they know you want. Especially when you have like had conversations and discussions with friends. And I've had these experiences in the past where you'll tell somebody with family members, you know, I really want to do this. I really want to try this. Well, maybe it's just not the right time. Maybe you just need to, you know, just it's fine. You're at least you're doing something. People who talk like that really give me the ick. It took me a while to realize that people who talk like that, especially when they're doing great, they're just trying to hold you back. I said what I said, and that's how it is. A lot of times people, when they're doing so well in life, they try to hold you back because they don't want to see you win because they have a negative, draining, jealous spirit about themselves. There are some people like that. Now, on the flip side of that, there are people who truly love you and care for you, and they just want you to be careful. They want you to be mindful of different things, and they try to warn you and all of that. I understand that and you must understand that. But as I've said in previous videos, check the source. It's not what they say, it's who it's coming from. If you have a person who's constantly trying to tell you to settle when they are constantly taking great strides and they're your friend, a person who's ambitious, especially an ambitious woman, she wants to see all of her friends win. She wants to see all of her friends being great like herself. But if you have a friend who's constantly trying to keep you in a little less position, that's not a friend, that's a hater, and you need to remove yourself from them right away. All right? Like and subscribe to the channel and share this content. Hit the notification bell so that you're aware when I post a brand new video. If you watch this video until the very end, put the high hill emoji in the comment section. I absolutely love to see it. Take care.